To provide orientation during approach and landing, runways include a combination of aiming point markings, which serve as a visual aiming point for a landing aircraft, touchdown zone markings, and approach path guidance systems. Yet, it is important to note that aiming point markings do not always correspond with the placement of visual and instrument approach aids, or with the ICAO Annex 14 standard. Even on precision runways, glide slope transmitter and approach path indicator system locations vary by design criteria. And approach landing aids are calibrated for the largest certified aircraft category. Therefore, pilots may observe contradictory indications during the later stages of the approach, even if they are perfectly on the ILS glide slope. All because of aiming point selection and divergence between designed and actual eye-to-wheel heights. Let's compare two runways. They have quite a few differences. If you don't anticipate and manage these differences, it can have a negative impact on approach and landing. So how do we ensure compliant and stable approaches and mitigate runway excursions? First, the industry should establish and promote the use of accurate and common landing reference points and pass the word when they are non-standard, as recommended in European Action Plan for the Prevention of Runway Excursions. Second, operators should refer to the aircraft manufacturer's guidance for runways when approach and landing references do not align. Third, Pilots should cross-check aeronautical charts to determine if landing performance data matches approach and runway references. Fourth, pilots should review, brief, and anticipate visual cues during the later stages of the approach. Lastly, landing long can easily lead to runway excursions, so pilots, if you are not landing in the touchdown zone, go around. Learn more about aiming point management on Skybury.